the status quo in, in Arizona and really across the nation is to, to, to cower to the gun lobby. There's something deeply un-American about this law, essentially trying to hamstring the kinds of grassroots efforts that are gaining momentum across this country. These kinds of efforts really hurt average American citizens, and I hope that it's overturned. The status quo in, in Arizona, and really across the nation, is to, to, to cower to the gun lobby, to make false idols of weapons of death, and then to compete to see how far we can push the limits to put more guns into more people's hands, even if it means passing a law like this one that completely disregards other constitutional provisions. Uh, constitutional provisions like the separation of powers or the supremacy clause. Well, the most recent case that we have on uh, examining gun laws was the D.C. versus Heller case. If you take that as an article of faith that Justice Scalia, a champion of the Second Amendment, said in that case, and he was looking at this Arizona law, I think he'd have to strike it down as unconstitutional. He said, like most rights, the right secured by the Second Amendment is not unlimited. No. Uh, right under our Constitution is unlimited. And so I think that it has real constitutional challenges and would be subject to, I think, a real potential successful challenge. is to protect the Second Amendment. There's a lot of discussion out of Washington, D.C. about congressional action around the Second Amendment, and this law was simply to protect the rights that we already enjoy in Arizona. This doesn't make us a, a pro-Second Amendment to be running bills like this. This doesn't make us patriots. This doesn't make us uh, more American because we, we, we vote for bills like this. Uh, what this does is it makes us agents of the gun lobby and perpetuators of the status quo that keeps the United States as literally one of the most deadly gun violence nations on earth. Well, we're hugely energized and while we rightly applauded the president and his administration from taking, for taking these steps. When we face an epidemic that's preventable, we're losing 40,000 people a year, 80,000 more who are shot, a uniquely American epidemic. There's a lot more we want to do. This is a preventable epidemic. We need the right solutions to reduce suicide, homicide, domestic violence, unintentional injury of children, and we can do it. So we'll be working very closely with the administration to shape out what we hope will be the next steps and continue to put serious pressure on Congress to act. Time and again, as progress has stalled, we've all asked, what are we waiting for? Because we aren't waiting for a tragedy, I know that. We've had more tragedy than we can bear. <laughs> 